Hi, I'm Rachel, the CEO of Intrinio. You may know of us as a core provider of financial data feeds via API for things like stocks, options, ETFs, and more. Being a data provider puts us in a very unique position. We get to see what everyone is doing with the data, and this makes it easy for us to spot and track trends in the investment landscape. ETF data has been flying off the shelf lately, and it's easy to see why. In 2021, ETF inflows hit a major milestone, topping $1 trillion for the first time ever. We can only expect this to continue expanding as the diversity of ETF offerings continues to increase. Just take a look at ARK Invest, Kathy Wood's fund, which, by the way, just moved to our own backyard here in St. Petersburg, Florida. Hailed as our generation's Warren Buffett, even through the volatility, her ETFs are making quite a splash. Okay, so why do so many investors care about this? John Maynard Keynes said markets can stay irrational longer than you can stay solvent. The balanced portfolios and diversity that ETFs offer can help you stay rational and solvent when individual equities are going up and down. Furthermore, unlike an individual security where you have to decide both the best price target to buy and sell at, ETF structure allows you to set it and forget it and sell whenever you're ready for retirement. This asset class is obviously one to keep an eye on, but to do so, you'll need a reliable data feed. Don't worry, as always, we've got you covered. In this video, we're going to walk through a guide to ETF diversification, so you can develop your own strategy and leverage it in your portfolio for your clients or inside your investment app or platform. Now would be a great time to offer this insight to your users, clients, and investors. So first off, what is an ETF? Exchange-traded funds, or ETFs, are investment funds that purchase and rebalance a basket of individual securities, such as stocks and bonds. ETFs trade identically to individual securities, such as Apple or Microsoft. The only difference is that with an ETF, you are not purchasing a single security, but rather a basket of securities that provides your portfolio with exposure over a wide range of companies, sectors, and industries. So what are the benefits of ETFs? Some of the benefits of ETFs include their low cost structure, diversity and transparency, index tracking. Okay, let's first talk about low cost structure. Unlike mutual funds, ETFs never charge a load fee and their expense ratios are typically much smaller. Passive index-based ETFs typically have the lowest fees. An example is the 0.03% expense ratio of Vanguard's S&P 500 ETF. To highlight how small this fee is, you would incur only $71 in fees with a hypothetical investment of $10,000 over a 10-year period. Passive ETFs can get away with charging lower fees because there is minimal effort on behalf of the fund manager's team to ensure that they are properly tracking the underlying index. Additionally, Passive ETFs make money by loaning out the shares held within the ETF for a fee to investors that are interested in shorting select companies. On the other hand, actively managed ETFs will always have a higher expense fees than their passive counterparty. Active ETFs must charge higher fees to compensate the fund's team for the data and research that goes into every investment that they make. Additionally, because an actively managed ETF consistently turns over its portfolio in pursuit of outperforming a benchmark, Taxes and fees will also eat away at the overall returns. So if you are building or running a retail investment platform, the chances are high that your users are price sensitive and flock towards low cost investments like ETFs. So it would probably be wise to add this data to your solution so that they can stay up to speed. Next up, let's talk about diversity and transparency. One of the more significant advantages of ETFs is the diversity they provide to a portfolio. Instead of owning a single or a handful of stocks, ETFs can provide you with access to an entire index with a single purchase. Additionally, ETFs track all types of indices and investment outcomes, from ESG ETFs that allow you to invest in companies that reflect your values, to sector ETFs that enable you to invest only in landscapes you feel most comfortable in. With the wide range of ETF investments available, you will undoubtedly be able to find one or many that work best with your investment style. You can see the exact weight of each holding and compare these weights with similar ETFs that you are interested in, thereby ensuring that you hold the precise mixture of investments that you desire. This opens up a pretty cool data visualization opportunity. With the Intrinio API, you can visualize the underlying holdings of ETFs in snappy charts and visuals for your users, 
which will increase engagement and help your business grow. Next, let's talk about index tracking. Index tracking or indexing is the practice of buying all the components of a market index, such as the Standard & Poor's 500 index, and an ETF's ability to perform this style of investing conveniently may be its most significant benefit. While tracking an index and matching its returns may not seem all that exciting or extraordinary, the fact that the average investor, retail, or professional underperforms the market in any given year should make the ability to own the market itself an enticing offering. In fact, picking individual stocks is a zero-sum game, as all stocks in an index must be owned by some investor. As a result, 50% of the participants actively trying to outperform the index will fail in any given year, and the other 50% will succeed. Additionally, even those in the 50% who do beat the market's return, their net return might still be less than the market average after deducting management fees and capital gains taxes, making it even less likely to outperform. In the end, ETFs allow investors to avoid playing this 50-50 game, and while investing in an index tracking ETF such as Vanguard's S&P 500 ETF ensures that you will never beat the market's return, it also guarantees that you will never join the majority of investors underperforming their benchmark index. There are lots of arguments across the active versus passive investing spectrum, but smart investors at least like to view their options. So if you run a fintech platform or company, you'd better give the people what they want, and that means displaying this ETF data for them to browse. All right, how to display ETF data on my platform? With the ever-growing popularity of ETFs amongst investors, Intrinio is proud to be supplying the next generation of fintech companies with a high-quality ETF data offering. Powered by CFRA, our ETF API endpoints provide in-depth metadata, stats, analytics, and complete holdings of every active ETF in the US and Canada. With all these ETF data offerings, we constantly discuss potential use cases for the best ways to display and use this data on fintech platforms. Given the diversity of assets held in ETFs, there will undoubtedly be an overlap of securities held by an investor who owns multiple ETFs. Therefore, one of our most recent use cases was to allow ETF investors to see just exactly how much of their money is allocated to securities held within their ETFs. We can complete this task with just two simple steps. Retrieve ETF holdings allocations and aggregate ETF holdings allocations across multiple ETFs. First, Let's retrieve the holdings weights. The following ETF holdings dataset function accepts two arguments, an ETF ticker and allocation, and ultimately returns a pandas data frame with the necessary columns, ticker, seed all, allocation, to later aggregate holding allocations across ETFs. We achieve this outcome by first using Intrinio's ETF holdings endpoint to retrieve the latest holdings of a particular ETF. After retrieving these holdings and converting our JSON API response to a pandas data frame, we then construct a new column, funds allocation. By taking our allocation argument, the funds an investor has allocated towards a particular ETF, and multiplying it by the holdings weight in the ETF. Next, we'll aggregate ETF holdings allocations across multiple ETFs. The ETF diversity dataset function below accepts a dictionary of key value pairs, where the keys are ETF tickers and the values are an investor's allocation to those ETFs. It then iterates through each ticker and allocation, passing these variables as arguments into the ETF holdings dataset function, and ultimately appending the returned holdings pandas data frame to a list. We then use pandas concat method to combine our list of data frames into a single data frame. Next, we use the group by method to group similar holdings across data frames, those that overlap within each ETF and sum their allocations together. Finally, we sort and clean up these values and return a completed data frame that provides an investor with a clear, transparent picture of how many companies they hold within their ETFs and the dollars allocated towards each one. Okay, there you have it. We've given you a rundown of why ETFs are so popular, what they are, the benefits, and how to use the Intrinio API to integrate this data into any app, platform, website, software, or trading algorithm. We make ETF data available in our bronze, silver, and gold packages at Intrinio, making it super easy to get started and scale up over time. If you want to try out the data for free, visit our website at www.intrinio.com and chat with one of our team members today. They're ready for you. You can also find links to our documentation, GitHub, and information on our other equity and options data packages in the description below. If this video was helpful, please like and subscribe to our channel for more content like this. Thanks for listening. We can't wait to see what you build with ETF data.